Welcome to Accelerated Engineering. My name is John, and today's tutorial is going to be on defining a sync function that we can call and use in other parts of Excel or in other spreadsheets. This will cover the uh, lambda function. It will cover prob well, probably a let function at some point. I'm going to make a chart or a graph that shows how this value evolves over time. And we're going to use uh, a bunch of dynamic arrays and some fun bits and pieces in order to make it go. Without further ado, let's begin. The sync function is defined mathematically as the function of x. As a function of x, it is equal to the sine of x over x. And in communications or communication science, this is defined additionally as um, pi x over sine of pi x over pi x. It stretches the frequency out, but because pi is such an integral part of the um, maths in signal processing, pi is just inserted into this function. It's a matter of a factor within the um, within the frequency, and it also changes the rate at which this function decays across time, but that's beyond what we need to deal with here. It's an easy modification to the, to the equation, or to the function, pardon me. Also of notable interest is that at 1, or when x is equal to 1, pardon me, when x is equal to 0, the function is defined to be equal to 1. And that's obtained by taking the limit of sine x over x as x goes to 0, and finding that that limit approaches 0, even though at um, x is equal to 0, this function should explode. It's that, uh, yeah, anyway, that's some calculus. don't really need to deal with that right now. First thing that I would like to do is generate a sequence of numbers. So I'm going to use the sequence function. And because I want to go between, I think, negative 1 and 1, I'm going to use 101 steps, which is 50 on each side of 0 and 0 itself. It will go in one column. I will start at negative 1 and then increment these by 0 0.02. That should give me. 50 steps on each side, yeah, that should get me all the way to positive 1 from negative 1. Starting at negative 1, control arrow down to jump to the bottom, gets me all the way to 1. Perfect. Okay. Next thing to do then is say that uh, I'm going to take this and just write it as a function. This equals f4, that's no good, equals sine of f4 divided by f4 sine of x over x, and there we go. Now rather than click and drag this all the way down, what I would rather do is alter my reference type to involve the hash symbol, which causes it to grab the entire array. I'll do that in both places, and that should give me an array output that ranges from 0.84 to well, whatever it is down here, 0.84 again. That's nice and symmetrical. Okay. Now I'll insert a chart so that we can kind of see how this behaves, make sure it's doing what we think it's doing. Data, ah, oh, pardon me, insert. I'd like to insert an XY graph. Let's take that one with the nice smooth lines. Now I'll select our data, add to it. We'll call the series name SyncX. The x values are going to be everything from here to here, all of the uh, input x values, and the y values will be the function output. And we'll just take everything from here to here and make sure that we get rid of that one. That does not belong. There we go. Well, that doesn't look quite right. In fact, that does not capture enough of this function. It's kind of what I thought was going to happen. So let's stretch this out. We're going to maintain the um, 101, but instead I think we're going to go, uh, we're going to have this start at, at negative 2 and change by steps of 1 one hundredth. Oh, sorry. We're going to go up. If we stretch the range, we have to also stretch the steps in order to make sure that we get something. Let's see what that does. Still not enough. I'm going to stretch it even more. 
let's go by a factor of 10. We're going to go from minus 20 to plus 10 to e 20, and I have to go and set up 0.4. There we go. That is looking absolutely fantastic. Now I'm curious about what it's doing at around about zero. So let's find out what this spat out. Interesting. It says that rather than let this be equal to zero, it's just gone to be a very, very small number. Minus 4.1 times 10 to the negative 15. Now that's interesting. Because what happens if I just took one of these values and manually changed it to be equal to zero? Let's find out. Oops, of course it would do that. Uh, instead, I'll just take zero, and we'll do it at the top, and say equals sine of f3 divided by f3. What's that equal? Divided by zero error. So that's not so great. And in fact, if I changed this sequence and said to take everything here and round it off to the nearest, Oh, let's see, to the nearest hundredth, what happens? Oops. Round it off to the nearest one hundredth. And that gets very fun very fast. So, there we go. Perfect. It gets a little bit janky. And then at that zero value, there we go, a whole bunch of divide by zero errors. That is not what I want to have happen in our nice in our nice sync function. I'd like this to be nice and smooth. So here's what we're gonna do instead. Instead of having this be defined as sine of f4 divided by f4, we're gonna say that if the input, if f if f4 hash is equal to zero then this equals 1, and otherwise it equals the, uh, the previously defined value. Hit enter there. Has it all spit out just fine, and if I take that function and uh, give it a zero value, just to check, mm -hmm. let's see, how am I going to feed it a zero? Well, I'll just grab this paste it up here, and I will change all of these manually to be equal to F3. This is a little bit roundabout, but it's just to show how it works. And it spits out a 1. Perfect. That is exactly how I want this function to behave. Everything is looking great. Now, I would like to be able to call this as its own function at some point. So what I'm going to do instead, or in my next column over, is I'm going to say equals lambda. We're going to crack out the lambda function. Equals lambda tab equals lam lambda tab. There we go. And we'll jump into the formula bar. Close that off and we'll give it something to, we'll feed it that whole array right now. Five. What I'm going to say is, well, we'll take the exact same thing that we have already written. If, pardon me, give the lambda an input. And that's the only input we need. So if the input is equal to zero, output one, otherwise take the sign of the input and divide it by the input. That's exactly what we had written before just now inside of a lambda. We'll hit enter. And that spits out exactly the same thing. In fact, it's just perfect. Now what I would like to do is say what happens if, what happens if I take this value and multiply it by something? Oh, it doesn't show up yet because I don't have the graph set up. Let's just do that. I would like to select some new data add a new one. We're going to call this sync of x2. Our x values are going to be the same as the previous one. There we go. And the y values will be our new function. There we go. There we 
ratio, you can see that sink of 2x increases the frequency by exactly double. Zooming on this area, we see a crossover, a second zero crossing, and there's two zero crossings in the orange function for every one on the blue function. Uh, let's just let's take that and do it the other way. What happens if we there we go. Sorry, it's just being a little bit janky. Okay. There we go. What happens if we take this and stretch it instead? 0.5. Look at that. The orange function stretches out and has fewer zero crossings per unit of x. That's fantastic. The other thing that we could do that might be fun is what if we wanted to vertically shift it? Let's just take it and move it up. Oh, pardon me, that doesn't move it up. It actually shifts the zero point. If I wanted to um, move it up, I'd have to put this outside of the function. And that would actually shift it up on the y-axis. Silly me, it's been a while since I've done this. Perfect, okay. Well, now that I've got the lambda sorted, or now I've got it functioning in a lambda, let's add that as a function. I'll go to formulas and jump into the name manager, create a new one. We're gonna call this function, uh, not generate, we're just gonna call it sync. That's it. Now this will work better if I grab this text in advance. So we'll copy and paste, control C. Name manager, new, call the function sync. Paste our lambda text right in here, and that's it. It's done. I'm gonna just delete that and say instead, take the sync of that whole range, and it's done just the way we wanted it. If I want to change the frequency, we can change the frequency in here. If we want to change the zero crossing, I can add a little bit to shift it, pardon me, shift it up or down by adding to the outside. And I can shift it left or right by adding on the inside. My sync function is working perfectly. And now I can mess with this really any way that I really any way that I want. It just gives me an extra uh, function that I can use, especially for when I'm generating random data that I want or if I was going to do some signal processing. So for example, what would be a fun thing to do? You know what would be a fun thing to do with a signal processing like this is I could take um, I could take this and make a more complicated function. Let's say for example that I wanted to take let's say uh, the sync of x and then add to it, so this is going to move me up and down again, Remember, I'm going to add to it the value of x um, divided by 10. So what that's going to, that, what, what that should do is it should slant my whole function. Um, up into the right, if I've got it right. There we go. That's kind of fun. I could do all kinds of neat stuff with that. What if I wanted to do something messy? What if instead of doing it that way, I'll start, and I'll start a new column, what if instead I said I want this to equal the sync function, but I'm gonna play around with the period of the function. I could say equals um, f Four, but I actually want to take that value and square it just to make things really weird. Like what happens? So it will expand my data range and I get that janky function. There you go. Where you can see if we zoom in on it, let's see if it'll let me zoom in, it decays away much faster and it looks like it zips up and down quite a bit. So that's interesting. What if we took it and what else could we do? That's kind of fun. Mm, ah, you know what? 
I think that's good for the time being. You get the idea. It's a fun signal processing function. So we're going to say that that concludes this tutorial or this workshop or whatever this is on how to generate an entirely new function based on, well, based on some fun maths. Hope that you enjoyed. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe if you want to see more content like this.